Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will be going through one of the papers from Spotify, which is personalized audiobook recommendation at Spotify through graph neural networks. This paper was published recently in May 2024 uh, in the web conference. And uh, I want to, before doing a deep dive of the paper, I want to cover three parts. One is that this paper talks about how the audiobook content type was personalized for all the users. The challenge is that audiobooks were introduced as a new content type. Previously in Spotify, there used to be a lot of music and podcasts, which is still there is, but a new content type, which is audiobook was also introduced in the platform. How to uh, personalize audiobook content with such sparse data uh, with the help of older data available from uh, or dense data available from music and podcast is what done in this paper and for that they use graph neural network to use the uh, available dense data from other type of content time which is uh, music and podcast. Secondly, they came up with an approach which uses graph ne neural networks and two tower. But what I liked about this paper is that they did lot of data analysis to back the approach that yes, graph neural network is making sense here. They have enough analysis uh, data backing done to uh, justify that it's use is you it might be useful here to use graph neural network and third is that as i was talking about the audiobook was introduced as a new content type its data was very sparse so they use the data which is available from podcast and music to personalize audiobooks hence this approach can be generalized to many other domains as well like for example e-commerce there will be cold start users or cold start uh, items similarly for uh, hospitality domain there will be cold start properties uh, cold start uh, house homestays and so on so this approach can be generalized to such cold start problems and as well as it can be used for uh, dense data as well because the approach is pretty generic so with that let's get uh, started and deep dive into the paper uh, in an ever evolving digital audio space or spotify well known for its music and talk content recently introduced audiobooks for its vast user base this move presents significant challenges for personalized recommendation because introducing a new content type into an existing platform uh, comes with extreme data sparsity because it's a new content type which is audiobook and it will have lot of uh, uh, sparse data. To address the challenge, Spotify leveraged podcast and music user preferences like for the same user. We may have just information about one audiobook like which user might have clicked or listened to but we, for the same user we have lot of information available about their podcast and music right so to address this challenge we leverage podcast and music user preference and introduce two tower heterogeneous graph neural network a scalable recommendation system comprising heterogeneous graph neural network and a two tower model and uh, we'll see the results uh, finally after doing this uh, building this model and uh, experimenting it for a uh, user significant user base they found significant improvement in the quality of personalized recommendation resulting in a 46 percent increase in new body new audiobooks start rate and 23 percent boost in streaming rate so basically 46 percent of more audiobooks uh, started coming in users feed they got a kickstart and 23 percent boost in streaming rate can be think thought of as 23 percent increase in the user engagement so this were the results which we'll see again in the experimentation section so uh, with that let's look at the introduction section uh, with, when it comes to audiobooks spotify faces four main challenges first is that audiobooks recommendation have not previously been studied at scale because it's a new content type which was released in the platform so there was not much past data available or past research available around audiobooks secondly introducing a new content type in the existing platform faces extremely cold start challenge due to data scarcity or data sparsity and uh, for premium users some of the users who have spotify premium prescription they have very low risk tolerance they have paid the money for best user experience and if we introduce some audiobooks to them which are not relevant it will be uh, it will be risky because they are at lower risk tolerance thus creating high stakes for the relevancy and accuracy of audiobooks recommendations is needed 
And finally, the fourth reason is that intro, integrating a new product into an existing platform requires the recommendation system to be efficient, scalable and modular, right? So that it doesn't happen that because of this new content type, the new introduced model is slow and all. It has to be very efficient, scalable and modular in nature. So these were the four challenges that Spotify faced before personalizing the uh, audiobook content, which was a new content type uh, introduced in the platform. In response to all these challenges, the four challenges we saw, uh, Spotify presents two tower heterogeneous graph neural network, a scalable and modular graph based recommendation system that combines a heterogeneous graph neural network with a two tower model. And uh, they conducted thorough data analysis and found that user podcast consumption is critical to understand uh, user audiobook reference. So this is what I was talking about that before coming up with this graph neural network, they also did data analysis and figured out that yes, users, same users information about uh, audio. Uh, or music they have listened to and podcast they have listened to is extremely useful in personalizing or coming up with their preference for the audiobooks as well. And um, our solution decouples the recommendation task into an item item component via the heterogeneous graph neural network and a user item component via, via a two tower net model. The decoupling leads to a significant smaller and tractable graph between items only which we call co-listening graphs. The co-listening graphs and combination of HGNN with a two tower reduces the HGNN's inherent complexity of retrieving and aggregating neighboring nodes and ensures scalability. So basically what they have done is, we will we'll see the approach in details, but what they are saying and what they have done is, they have a heterogeneous graph neural network and they have a two tower. Now these two are separate and modular in nature, they are separate uh, and the uh, heterogeneous graph neural network brings the goodness of item item similarity and finally we have to personalize it for the user right we have to personalize items which are audiobooks uh, podcasts and uh, music uh, especially in this work it's about audiobooks we have to personalize audiobooks for the users so that user item personalization comes from the two tower and we know two tower is known for its uh, scalable properties and secondly they created a co-listening graph in the HGNN part which we will look at look now and uh, uh, in this uh, co-listening graph they look at the user and their uh, audiobooks, podcast and music uh, uh, listening preferences what they have heard and they create a graph out of it. We will we'll see the graph in the next section. So, so now it is time to look at the graph. So, uh, this is how the data uh, will actually look like that some user let us say user A has listened to some audiobook is tiny to see and also they have listened to a podcast. Similarly, second user has also listened to the same podcast because we know podcast data is dense. Many users would have listened to that podcast, but the user has also listened to some audiobook and third user has only listened to one audiobook. Now, figure one is showing that this is how the user consumption looks like, which involves audiobook, audiobooks and podcast. Second is how the co-listening graph is created because HGN and heterogeneous graph neural network, how the graph is created. First of all, every node um, or, or every entity will become one of the node and entity will be like podcast, music and audiobook. So every audiobook and podcast will become one of the nodes. nodes. Uh, remember, we haven't connected them. We haven't uh, dis, uh, defined yet what will be the age look like, but every entity or every um, content uh, will become one of the nodes. So the audiobook, uh, Stephen Tussie, um, Stephen King's IT and this podcast Fake Doctors will become one of the nodes. We build a co-listening graph with nodes representing audiobooks or podcasts and ages connecting nodes whenever at least one user streams both. So even if one user has listened to both podcast and audiobook, they will get connected. So this user has listened to this audiobook as well as this podcast, so they get connected. So we build a co-listening graph with nodes representing audiobooks or podcasts and edges connecting nodes whenever at least one user uh, streams both. So even if one user has streamed both audiobook and podcast, they will get connected. And also the similarly, the podcast will get connected and also the music videos will, music audios will get connected. Uh, now one thing that you can see here is that two audiobooks, which no users has listened to both of them because we know audiobook data is very sparse. These audiobooks were not listened by any single user, both the audiobooks, but still they get connected by one hop distance through the podcast, which is common by some user. Some user have seen this podcast and as well as they have listened to this audiobook and other user have also listened to this podcast and this audiobook. So actually these audiobooks were not listened by any single user, but still they get connected through one hop distance. Secondly, 
द अदर यूजर हु हैज ओनली लिसन टू डिलीशियस ऑडियो बुक मे ऑल्सो गेट रिकमेंडेशन ऑफ दिस आई टी स्टेफन किंग्स आई टी बुक बिकॉज ऑफ टू हॉफ डिस्टेंस लाइक वन यूजर वुड हैव लिसन टू सम पॉडकास्ट विच हैज एंड दे हैव ऑल्सो लिसन टू डिलीसियस अदर यूजर हैज ऑल्सो लिसन टू सम पॉडकास्ट एंड दे हैव लिसन टू आई टी सो डिलीसियस एंड आई टी गेट्स कनेक्टेड बाई टू हॉफ डिस्टेंस सो दिस इज हाउ यू कैन सी दैट द मैजिक ऑफ ग्राफ दैट वी इच कंटेंट और इच म्यूजिक audio book or podcast will become one of the notes and even if one user has listened to both uh, then they will get connected in this way even if the uh, two far uh, audio books which have not listened by the same user can still get connected through one hop distance two hop distance or k hop distance so this is the magic of graphs but data analysis is also needed like is connecting the notes this way will be useful or not so they have done the data analysis also which we will uh, look uh, in the data section but before that they have also talked about the related works the past work that previously there used to be matrix factorization and factorization machines used uh, but then the in the recommendation system the retrieval model which retrieves the relevant content for the user uh, got replaced by two tower model now it is the most popular and widely adopted mechanism is two tower model it uses a separate separate deep neural network for users and items i can show it actually um this is how a two tower looks like there are two towers one is for user one is for audio book user will user tower will generate the user embedding audio book will generate the audio embedding and if the two embeddings dot product is high it means that for this user this audio book is relevant so that's why this uh, two tower models are highly scalable so uh, we were looking at uh, the uh, related works so now it is two tower models are used it's a separate deep neural network encoder for user and items and incorpor incorporates user and item features two tower models have found success in industrial recommendation system they guarantee scalability and fast serving performance at inference time also they have talked about graph based recommendations graph based approaches have proven to be effective for recommendation tasks especially addressing challenges in cold start scenarios and diversifying recommendations uh, here we have a cold start scenario where we have very sparse data very less data about audio books but we have lot of data about user preferences for podcast and other music audios so we are using that information to um, make a personalized recommendation for sparse data which is audio books as well so this graph neural based approaches play vital role in cold start problem although they are efficient in learning graph structure this technique are limited by transductive nature making them incapable of generalizing to unseen nodes so graph neural networks are called transductive because they can only uh, predict or give the information about the nodes which is the audio books and so on but if some new thing come up a new audio book is released it won't be able to generalize because from the past data from which we have trained this network doesn't have uh, a node for this new audio book so they can only um, uh, generalize for the nodes which we had used in the training they can't uh, generalize for unseen nodes the expressive power of graph neural networks is evident from their application in both academic and industrial domains next we'll talk about data that before coming up with this approach of co listening graphs using a heterogeneous graph neural networks okay so one more thing heterogeneous graph neural networks because the nodes are heterogeneous some node may be uh, depicting audio books some uh, node may be depicting podcast and some node may be depicting audio music right so uh, these nodes are heterogeneous so it's called heterogeneous graph neural network now coming to this data part before um, uh such coming up with this graph neural network that it will work for this use case they did lot of data analysis and backed the approach that yes users information about podcast and music audios will be relevant in personalizing audio books as well so we study the extent of our data sparsity and observe similarities between audio books and podcast in terms of content or user preferences hence motivating our approach they took 90 days of streaming data comprising more than 800 million unique streams and uh, figure 2a shows that distribution of streamed hours among users and audiobook title notably approximately 25% of user accounts for 75% of all streaming hours and the graph illustrates that 20% of the audiobooks contribute to 80% of the streamed hours so basically this uh, graph they are saying that the uh, orange one is the users only 25% of the users they contribute to all 75% of streaming hours and 20% of audiobooks contributes to 80% of 
uh, streaming hours and this is very common and it's called Pareto because uh, there will be always uh, power users and power items which contributes to the majority of the uh, platform goodness. So observation is audiobook streams are most dominated by power users and uh, popular titles or popular content. Second analysis that they did was early empirical assessment shows that over 70% of the initial audiobook consumer had previously engaged with podcasts. So for 70% of the audiobooks which have at least some data for those consumers we have previously engaged podcast data as well. So we have dense podcast data also available to personalize the audiobooks. Now consequently user interactions with podcasts could offer valuable insights into understanding audiobook user preference. We use the Spotify podcast model currently in production to extract user embeddings which reflect individual podcast preference. So what they did the podcast model which was already there from past because podcast was a old content type already available in Spotify. They used the podcast model to, uh, uh, to generate the user embeddings. From uh, them we determine whether users sharing at least one streaming audio book exhibit greater similarity than user that stream different audio books. We randomly sample 10,000 pairs of user representation in which you streamed at least one audio book that you just also streamed. We also randomly sample 10,000 pairs of user representation coupled together at random and figure 2B shows that cosine similarity between users with, uh, with shared audiobook co-listening exhibit a significantly higher level of similarity than those users coupled at random. So basically what they did was they took the user embedding from the podcast model and uh, uh, they picked two users who have listened to the same audiobook. So they have a co-listening uh, pattern that they have listened to the same audiobook and they also picked two users they would have listened to different uh, randomly different audiobooks. So they are saying that the users who listen to the same audiobook, the blue one are more similar in nature. If you see the user user similarity, they, the blue graph is more similar than the orange graph which uh, denotes uh, user who would have listened to two different audio podcasts and the uh, blue one denotes cosine similarity of users who have listened to the same audiobook. So users who listen to the same audiobooks are more similar. And also it shows that even the podcast data is useful because they have used the user embedding from podcast model only. They did further analysis as well. They, they tried to figure out is content information. The, the audiobook will also have content information. They can convert the speech into text and use the content information. Is that content information useful or not? Content information can also provide hints about user consumption. For each audiobook in the catalog, we use text metadata that is title and description to generate low dimensional representation via multi space sentence. But they use BERT to generate low dimensional embedding for the audiobook. Then we select 10,000 distinct pair of audiobooks in which each pair at least one user listened to both audiobooks and 10,000 pairs in which audiobooks were randomly paired. Figure 2C shows that co listened audiobook pairs present a higher level of similarity than those randomly uh, coupled highlighting the importance of considering content metadata in the recommendation ar architecture. So basically they are saying um, they use the content similarity between uh, two audiobooks which were listened by the same user. So same user has listened to two audiobooks versus uh, distinct users audiobook they did a cosine similarity and they found that content similarity is more in the same users listen audiobook. So which shows that um, uh, that content similarity is useful because let's say there is a user he would listen to similar type of audiobooks right. So if they take the user preference and uh, see that okay these are the two audiobooks these users have listened let's find the cosine similarity of the text similarity and also let's find cosine similarity of two random books then definitely it's higher for the uh, co-listened audiobook which shows that definitely content type is useful and as well as user interaction is useful. So if user has listened to both the content type that is also uh, important and as well as the content type is important. And lastly they want to look at like whether using the podcast information uh, to personalize audiobook is helpful or not. So uh, that's the last question can podcast co-listening serve as a reliable indicator for audiobook similarity. To answer this question, question we build a co-listening graph with audiobook and podcast notes connected whenever at least one user co-listens them. Figure 2D shows that indeed sampled audiobook connected through shared podcast exhibit a notably stronger similarity. So you can see that uh, they took two audiobooks which were not listened by the same user but they were connected by the 
user who would have listened to the same podcast so basically they are connected with one hop distance of the podcast a uh, user a would have listened to audiobook a and podcast 1 user b would have listened to podcast 1 and audiobook b so now they are doing the similarity of audiobook two audiobooks which are not directly listened by the same user but they are connected by podcast listening so by the co-listening of the same podcast and they are saying that the two audiobooks connected with the same podcast as a common node are more similar than two audiobooks picked at random so which shows that even the podcast information will be helpful in personalizing the uh, audiobook um, content type so uh, this makes the approach more data backed that they have seen that content type is useful they have seen that user information is also useful that if user listens to two audiobooks then those two audiobooks are more probable to be similar and thirdly the podcast information is also important because two audiobooks connected by a common podcast are also similar and also we can say that uh, there are also power audiobooks and power users which uh, contributes to maximum of the streaming hours so these are some of the data analysis which we have done to back up the sophisticated uh, graph neural network approach the audiobooks interactions are very sparse next we'll look at the model how the model was built model is a combination of two tower and heterogeneous graph neural network where the heterogeneous graph neural network uh, uh, learns the item item similarity and two tower models finally learns the user item similarity using the embeddings which we have learned from the heterogeneous graph neural network and also along with it it leverages other user features and signals so we'll look into that but now let's look at the heterogeneous graph neural network how it's created in detail Heterogeneous graph, graph neural network enable a comprehensive understanding of multiple data entities and relationship representation uh, represented on a graph. So uh, this is how the graph data is created. Uh, we built co-listening graph where catalog items can be audiobook and a podcast constitute nodes. An edge between two items is included if there is at least one user who interacted with both the items CI and CJ. so all the audiobooks and podcast will come become one of the nodes and they will get connected if there is even a single user who would have listened to uh, both of them so let's say if a2 and a1 was listened by the same user they will get connected if a1 and t1 listened by the same user they will get connected now a1 and a4 were not listened by the same user but still they are at one hop distance via the p1 which is podcast 1 and it's a heterogeneous graph neural network because there are audiobooks as well as podcasts and somewhere the blog says they have used the music content as well uh we only consider relations of type audiobook 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 podcast and podcast podcast right so they have used the information audiobook 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 podcast and podcast podcast this kind of relationships they have used uh to enhance our understanding of the catalog content we incorporate node features via llm embedding we use i titles and description of all podcast and audiobook in our catalog and the multi language sentence bulk model to create embeddings uh, which can be seen as low dimensional representation the edgnn learns complex pattern within our catalog item from this graph which contains information of both content and user preference this is very interesting so what they are saying that uh, for all the audiobook and podcast they will have the llm embedding which is the text embedding uh, from the text data uh, of those uh, content they will have the uh lm embedding which we can call as low dimensional embedding why low dimensional embedding because that is just used for initialization and then the message passing will happen message pass passing because it's a graph neural network in graph neural network um, the communications happens through uh, message passing and this embeddings will get updated from the neighbors information as well and that's the main reason we are using a graph neural network right we have very sparse data for audiobooks we want to use the information of podcast so some information from podcast will communicate will will flow to to the audiobooks and the embeddings will get updated those we can call as the complex or final embeddings or edgnn embeddings you can see here the two tower model finally will use this edgnn embeddings along with llm embedding also it can use so uh, so the llm embedding is the low dimensional embedding which will get updated as a result of message passing in the graph neural network uh, way of communication and these embeddings will get converted into will get modified into heterogeneous graph neural network embedding which will have the uh interaction uh, information as well and as well as the information passing from the neighboring node uh, at one hop two hop and k hop distance so the edgnn model is based on graph neural network message passing paradigm so graph neural network works 
on the base of a message passing and there are two main operation one is aggregate and other is update in aggregation what happens the information from neighboring nodes flows it can the aggregation can happen in multiple ways there can be attention module that how much to attend to different neighbors it can be through simple convolution so these are the ways in which the information passes from the neighboring nodes and updates the current node which is the current embeddings will get updated update and aggregate are differentiable functions based on c's neighborhood uh, the neighborhood is defined as all nodes C dash that are connected with the seed node C. So basically this uh, aggregate and update are all differentiable functions because uh, as I said uh, it may be based on attention, it can be based on convolution then how much in uh, weight is to give the, to the information of neighbor node it's learned through the gradient descent process that is because these functions are uh, differentiable the parameters are learned through the gradient descent process. Uh, we will look at the loss function as well. The node embeddings is normalized to make the training more stable and allow efficient approximate nearest neighborhood uh, search. And if there are L layers, let's say there is just one layer in the GNN, it means it will only allow one hop distance information and if there are L layers, then they will allow L hop distance information to pass through. And if there are too many layers, then uh, all the nodes will have mo uh, mostly the same information it won't be useful so we need to know that till which hop the information is valid and after which hop the information is more of noise right because it will it's a connected graph everything will get connected we need to know that how much neighboring uh, information we need to bring so depending on that we can have the uh, those many layers in our heterogeneous graph neural network now let's look at the loss function of this heterogeneous graph neural network which will make the uh, uh, neural networks learn its parameter and this message passing to be efficient. In HGNN, the message passing and back propagation steps are repeated for multiple epochs such that all parameters can be adjusted according to the training loss. Uh, and in particular, we optimize HGNN through a contrastive loss that maximizes the inner product between anchor and a positive sample while minimizing the inner product between anchor and negative sample. So they are using contrastive loss that is the uh, dot product of anchor and positive node which is the two nodes which are connected directly with the edge their uh, embedding should be more similar than uh, two nodes which are randomly picked. So that is what they have used for training uh, contrastive loss uh, where they want to maximize the inner product between anchor and positive sample that is connected node in a graph while minimizing the inner product between anchor and negative uh, samples. Here the negative samples are composed of all nodes that are not connected to the anchor by an edge. We travels all the edge of the graph each time selecting a positive and uh, negative sample and uh, this is how the loss can be defined that is we take the dot product of anchor and negative uh, node and add to it some margin also. So dot product plus some margin and still it should be lesser than the uh, dot product between anchor and positive uh, uh, node. Then only then we can say that uh, that loss is good. So this is how the margin loss or contrastive loss looks like so where delta denotes the margin hyperparameter as I was talking about. And one more thing they have done in the HGNN is balancing the multilink neighborhood sampler. Basically the co-listening graph exhibits a significant imbal imbalance because some of the edges like podcast, podcast or podcast audiobook may be more than audiobook, audiobook edges. And this is important because failing to consider this imbalance in our optimization process can lead our HGNN to drift away from its main task which is creating high quality audiobook embeddings. And to address the, this imbalance they have designed a multi-link neighborhood sampler which samples all edges type of different types in equal or similar proportions. And one more thing they have done is they do this sampling at every epoch and they ensure that uh, every time different set of edges are selected to maximize the data set coverage. With that we have completed the HGNN. Next let's look at the two tower model. The 2T HGNN uses a two tower model to build user a test and new audiobook vectors from the HGNN audiobook and podcast representation. So basically the HGNN learns item item similarity and two tower learns a scalable user tower similarity by using the embeddings which were learned from the HGNN. So HGNN embeddings are used as an input. The user tower takes as input user demographics information as well as user historical interactions with multiple audiobooks and podcasts. And also audiobook and podcast interactions are represented as mean of audiobook and podcast HGNN embedding. Um, and the audiobook tower uses audiobook metadata such as language, gender, LLM embedding 
uh, from title and description as well as audiobook agn and embedding so let's look at the two tower model what they are saying they are saying that there is a user tower and audiobook tower user tower looks uh, uses user features user demographics and so on and as well as agn and embedding so how to calculate user agn and embedding all the audiobooks and podcasts the user would have listened we do a mean of it to come up with user agn and embeddings and similarly for audiobook we will have all the audiobook metadata like date of release author details and so on along with LLM embedding as well as HGN and embedding that we just learned in the uh, previous task which is HGN and training. So HGN and what it does is it uh, converts the low level representation of LLM embeddings into HGN and embedding by using the message passing paradigm of graph neural network. And uh, the two tower model generates two output vectors which is OU and OA or OU means audiobook vector. Uh, OA means audiobook vector, OU means user vector and the dot product of this vector should be such that uh, the audiobook that user would have listened to should have um, more similarity than a random audiobook that user has not listened to. That is what they have said. It minimizes the following loss, increasing user vectors to be close to the audio vectors they have listened to and far away from other audiobook samples. So this is the loss function where uh, user and audiobook dot product should be very high and uh, audio uh, user and negatively sampled or any randomly picked uh, audiobooks dot product should be lower. So this term is as low as possible, as negative as possible. Then we can say that the loss function is minimized. And how they pick the negative sample? Negative audiobooks are selected via in batch negative. Uh, that is within the batch there will be all the user book and audiobooks they have listened to, and other audiobooks in the same batch will be considered as in batch negative. And one more thing that they do is we weight the loss by the inverse probability of occurrence of items in the training data set to prevent oversampling popular negative. So we have seen that there are 25% uh, of audiobooks that uh, contributes to 80% of streaming hours which is the Pareto effect. So there are some popular audiobooks to uh, so it doesn't happen that these popular negatives bias the training they weigh it by the inverse probability of their occurrence. And uh, finally how they serve it. Uh, in production, the two tower heterogeneous graph neural networks generates daily user and audiobook vectors where the audiobook vectors um, are close to the dot product of user vectors, right? And each day we train the HGNN model and pass the resulting podcast and audiobook embedding. That is the HGNN embedding learned from HGNN model is passed to the two tower model for training. Once the two tower model is trained, we generate vectors for audiobooks in the catalog and build a nearest neighbor. Uh, index for online serving. So basically they train the model every day and then HGN and embeddings are used in two tower model and this happens every day. And one more thing that they do is at serving time we generate user vector in real time by passing user features to the user towers and query the K nearest uh, index to retrieve K audiobook candidates for recommendation. So audiobooks embeddings are generated in offline, uh, ANN index is created and user embeddings are generated in real time so that let's say the last moment user interactions can also be used and cold start user problem can also be solved. So user embeddings are generated in real times then we do a uh, ANN with the created index of uh, audiobooks and recommend to users the audiobooks which have highest similarity the dot product is highest. Item vectors are pre-built and inserted into the index where user vectors are generated in real time to be highly reactive for new cold start user latency is ensured to be within 100 milliseconds and HGNN can perform inductive inference. Other thing that they are saying HGNN can perform inductive inference that is it can generalize to new audiobooks because let's say for new audiobooks LLM embeddings will be available even though HGNN embedding won't be available. This new audiobooks doesn't have even one user interaction. So in that uh, graph no message passing will happen but at least LLM embedding is there. So still it can infer towards new audiobook or new cold start audiobook problem. And finally looking at the experimentation and results they evaluated the model performance using both offline metrics and online A-B test. Uh, in the offline evaluation, they took a large scale data set of 10 million users, 3.5 million podcasts, 250k plus audiobooks. The evaluation was done on a holdout data set of last 14 days. So basically they took 90 days uh, data and last 14 day, days they took for evaluation other data they used for model building of course. And they evaluated the performance of recommendation at three standard metrics, hit rate at K, 
mean reciprocal rank and catalog coverage. Hit rate at K, where K equal to 10 means if they take the top 10 recommendation, where these recommendations actually listen by the user or not. Higher the listening rate or actual in the validation set data, user had uh, listened to that audio book and that is in the top 10, then hit rate will be higher. Hit rate should be as high as possible. Mean reciprocal rank means the first relevant audio book at which position was it. And catalog coverage means they are, is the model giving visibility to more and more audio books or not. And they also did an uh, ablation study. Ablation study means they have a heterogeneous graph neural network, right? If they remove some component of it, like for example, if we remove weak signals from two tower heterogeneous graph neural network, that is in the two tower model, if they remove some of the user features, what will happen? So they did all those studies and found that uh, the two tower heterogeneous graph neural network had the highest hit rate, highest MRRR and highest coverage. And when they remove some component of it, the metrics degrade. So showing that all the component of the um, architecture are very important. And finally, looking at the main thing, which is the experimentation, online experimentation result. We ran an AB experimentation using two tower heterogeneous graph neural network as a candidate generator to better understand the online performance of our model. And this model um, powered the audio book for use action for all the users. We recommended the audio books through this model. Spotify homepage that shows top K audiobooks personalized recommendation. The experimentation involved sample of 11.5 million monthly active users, which were randomly divided into three groups. Uh, the, uh, the first group was the one that was exposed to uh, the model currently in production. That is no audiobooks. Second is two tower, only the two tower model. And third is two tower heterogeneous graph neural network, which is the most sophisticated one. And they found that uh, the two tower HGNN had the highest stream rate, basically highest engagement of 25 plus percentage and also the coverage was high. The new book start rate was highest by of around 46.83% for the two tower heterogeneous graph neural network. So finally, they concluded that the proposed two tower heterogeneous graph neural network is an efficient uh, model that captures user tests for audiobooks through combination of heterogeneous graph neural network and two tower models. The modular approach allows them to decouple complex item item relationships while producing scalable recommendations for all users through the two towers. So the heterogeneous graph neural network provides item item similarity, generates HGN and embedding and later two tower helps them to personalize for user. And uh, the online AB experimentation demonstrates the success of deploying a 2 THGNN for audiobook recommendation and more generally its ability to power recommendations of a new talk or audio product on the existing platform. The model is now in production and exposed to all the users. The model uh, and this approach can scale across various content times leading, leading to a better personalized experience for online users. So this is a generalized approach which can uh, be used across domains for uh, wherever the uh, one of the entity has sparse data uh, and so on. So hope you like this video in which we cover one of the latest paper from Spotify, how they personalize a new content type audio book for their users through graph neural network and later they um, scale it using two towers. So two towers heterogeneous graph neural network. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more such updates. Bye.